So I had a company reach out to me in email asking me if I wanted to make a video for some of their coils. I said, sure. He goes, why not? Obviously I can use them because these ones look like poop. So basically I figured I'd do a quick video on how to make old, crusty, dirty looking valve covers with your coils all looking gnarly from straight from the junkyard with 300,000 miles. To something that looks a bit... I don't know, less janky. So it's real simple. What I what I do in order to replace the coils in the first place is pull uh, the connector off, which is easier with two hands. But you pull this tab back, and I just don't want to hurt my finger. And then you pull this off. Real simple. And then there's two right here and here, ten millimeter bolts. There's a few different style of coils. Each each one is slightly different. But the remaining principle is the same. There's two bolts that hold it onto the bracket. And then once it's free, it'll just look like this. Just by it'll just come off. Real super simple. That's all you gotta do to replace the coils on an LS-based car. But now if you want to take it an extra step, and you want to clean everything up and make it look nice. You're going to have to take the valve covers off, and in order to do that, you have to take the coil brackets off, which is real simple. I think it's 10 millimeter. There's one, two, three, four, five, five bolts that hold it on to the valve cover. You take this off after you disconnect uh, the wiring harness, of course. Take this and set it aside and then take the four bolts I believe they're seven millimeter make sure to disconnect any vacuum lines as well and then you basically end up with this and in order to make this look like this I took this and this mostly the wire wheel the wire wheel got most of the surface scuffed up and cleaned up and then I took a these sanding um, bit things that are replaceable. <clears throat> and uh, they're usually for like cylinder head polishing and stuff like that for runners. But this is what I used it for. Um, I did the same thing to the coil bracket. After I took, I took all the coils out and then I took the wiring harness off. And to do that, you just take some regular pliers and you go around to each of these little connected, these little pop clip things, squeeze them with the pliers and then push them down and you'll, uh, you'll get them through. And then, um, I took the wiring harness and I reloomed it in Tessa tape, which is this stuff right here. It's fabric tape. Really good for wiring harnesses. I like it at least. Some people don't. Everyone has an opinion. I like this stuff personally. I think uh, it adds a professional touch. It's uh, oil resistant. It's chemical resistant. I like to finish the ends with some high quality electrical tape. Um, Tesla tape is not electrically, uh, or it, it, it's not insulating. So it's not like electrical tape. You can't use it in replacement of electrical tape. But I like using electrical tape to seal the ends of it. I mean, seal. I'm not actually sealing anything. But I did the whole harness. Took out the old crap. And I used all the originally you can't really see it because I taped over it, but there's some uh spots for mounting the, the clips. Like these things. And uh I reloomed it. And then you end up with a bare coil bracket. It's just bare metal. I took a wire wheel and I cleaned up all the crap, took it to all the surfaces, all the stuff I couldn't reach. I used this. Actually, I used this mostly on the valve cover to get into like the grooves that go down the center. That helped a lot. But you just get this bracket sanded down, get all the old paint, 
and all the rust off although you can't really do too much for like pitting because there is going to be rust you know causing pitting the metal is deteriorating there's only so much you can do about that i mean i could just paint sand paint sand paint sand get rid of that but i don't care about it that much so um to clean the bolts i soaked them in clr for 24 hours and then washed them under water and uh, cleaned them with a wire brush and it went from these are the same they looked exactly the same as these to, to this just soaking them in clr and there's still some rust you can see like on the cap but overall they look much better um so it is the winter and i don't want to paint um in the basement like i don't want because the, the furnace is right there and i don't want to uh have the fumes travel through the house because i have pet birds actually my pet my birds are right above me but uh yeah i don't want the paint fumes to travel through the house so it is winter here in michigan um and i watched a few videos on youtube i don't remember what channels or anything i just skimmed through it real quick but some some really easy tips to to paint in the winter is for stuff like valve covers and coil brackets take a blowtorch and heat them up heat them up before you take them outside and then you don't have to get them like blazing hot where you can't touch it but i uh i took some um weed whacker string or whatever string you can use just tie it to a hole make it so it uh it hangs and I, I hung it from my clothesline. I actually hung all this from my clothesline. But, uh, yeah, you, you also heat the, the spray paint. So you take the cans and submerge it in water and put, like, a weight on top of the can so it stays submerged in water. And uh, I use hot tap water and just keep it submerged. And then I'll change the water out once. Once it cools down, put new water in and then that'll be when it's hot enough and in between the water changes i will shake the can vigorously but i used uh engine enamel with ceramic just to give it like a stock kind of metal look i think it came out good nice and clean but that is what I, oh, that's what i did i used this and it worked rather well and then basically putting it all back together very simple once it's all painted you know just put everything back together the way it came apart connect all the connectors together you know make sure that your valve covers are attached properly and all your vacuum lines are hooked up and that's how you do that it's real simple just takes a little bit of time a little bit of elbow grease and effort and you can turn this into this real nice and simple So really, uh, cost-wise, the new coils were like 90 bucks shipped. A can of paint was like 8 bucks. Um, I had these sanding things around already. I think a pack of them was like 10 bucks or something like that from uh, Harbor Freight. And I got this for like 3 bucks at uh, like O'Reilly's. That's all it takes to to make these look nice. And if you were to just use your, your, your coils that you had already... Um, oh yeah, the Tessa tape. This was like... I think you get three big rolls of it for like nine bucks. It's pretty cheap and affordable. I and mean, I love this stuff. I can't say anything negative about this. This is great, great, great tape. But yeah, it didn't really take much money at all outside of the coils being the primary cost. And I could always take these and clean them up and make them look nice. But I figured whatever, I got the offer. So that is what I decided to do with them. And I think it came out real nice. I have no complaints. Just a little bit of time and effort. So, uh, these coils. Pretty nice. They're quite cheap compared to other places. And uh, they've given me a 10% discount code to link in the comments. So, I'm going to throw that down there if you, uh, if you buy those. And just an update on this, um, engine's in, transmission's mounted, uh, need to get a drive shaft to finish the wiring, um, 
I have to drop the engine, so I'm making custom engine mounts. I'm going to do a video on that, but drop the engine so I can fit the intake because it kind of hits up there. But, uh, yeah, it is coming along. So if you got any questions, let me know. Um, I'll try to answer anything that is thrown at me. Uh, if you have any questions about how the swap is going or specific to the swap, you know, I'll answer that as well. I do plan on doing a comprehensive uh, swap video, but once the car is running, I'm quite a bit from that. I'm trying to hit the goal of getting the car started around springtime, but, you know, things happen and this world's kind of crazy, so I don't know what will happen in between now and then, but... Um, yeah, that's all you got to do to make this look like this. And if uh, you found this helpful, consider subscribing because it'll really help me out getting uh, this whole thing going. So I appreciate it. Love you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day.